I know what you're thinking. Zero trust is a buzzword, and you're not wrong. But it's also very real. And I want to show you how real it is here with Microsoft security technology and being able to modernize that approach using zero trust. Let me show you what I'm talking about. When I first started in IT 20 years ago, I had a desktop computer. I was in a corporate office building connecting to apps behind a firewall in a data center. And when I was on that computer, it was assumed that I'm supposed to be there. Uh, of course, it authenticated using a username and password, but that was really it. What if that computer gets compromised? Well, that attacker now has access to everything. Well, we have to evolve here, folks. Times have really changed. We're no longer using desktops in a corporate office building. We're, you know, almost anywhere, home, coffee shops. We're using personal devices that aren't even managed by the IT department. We're using cloud services where IT may have no control over that data that's in the cloud service. And not only that, but our customers and even business partners are logging in to access that data. So this perimeter is no longer this data center or this corporate network. The perimeter is really, you know, everything else. Actually, it's, it's identity, and we'll talk about that here in a moment. But just to show you how much times have changed, I mean, 94% of organizations out there are using cloud. 94%. The world is adopting it. And not only that, but they're also going mobile. And employees are bringing their own device to access that. And that device may have a high level of risk associated with it. And so this, you know, this new world really needs a new approach. And that's where we need to trust but verify, but verify explicitly. And using all the available data to authenticate you, not just a username and password. And using least privilege access, limiting your access with just in time and just enough. And we'll talk about that. And then assuming breach, have this mentality that an attacker is already in the network. And so let's minimize that blast radius and let's employ a strategy to prevent lateral movement. That's the new approach. And this comes down to using this integrated approach to securing access with adaptive controls and using technology that's built in, not bolted on. And so for us here at Microsoft, this boils down to identity, devices, apps, infrastructure, networking, and data. And I want to talk through each one of these with you. Now, let's start with the architecture. Now, I could probably spend a couple of hours on this, but let me boil it down for you. Uh, identity is really everything. All roads lead back to identity. That's our common denominator here. And so when we think about identity, it's, it's being able to authenticate you, not just with the username and password, but also using something like multi-factor authentication, evaluating the, the risk of that user account, i.e. are the credentials up for sale on the dark web, evaluating the session risk, right? And then look at your device. Is that device managed? Does it have any threats on it? Is it compliant with my policies? And what about the data you're trying to access? Is that data encrypted? Is it uh, labeled with a, uh, with a classification label, right? What kind of app am I trying to access? Is the app in the cloud or is it on-premises? I mean, you know, what kind of app is it? And then taking all these signals together to enforce the right policy upon authentication. That's zero trust. And so being able to do this, as I mentioned, starts with identity. And with identity, it, it really comes down to first and foremost, single sign-on. Let's make sure that all the apps that we're accessing, whether they are cloud apps, SaaS apps, or even apps on premises, we're using the same identity to access all of them, single sign-on. And then let's make sure we have automated provisioning and deprovisioning fed in directly from our HR systems into Azure Active Directory and automate this. So it starts there, but then, we have to also think about multi-factor authentication. And this is not just a text message, okay? This is being able to do things like the Microsoft Authenticator app, again, a push notification, being able to do authentication from a FIDO2 USB key, biometrics, fingerprint, facial recognition. You know, when I wake up every day and I turn on my Surface, it has biometrics built in, so it uses Windows Hello to log me in. I never, ever get prompted for username and password after that because it's true single sign-on, but that's a form of MFA. Even a phone call, I know what you're thinking, phone calls are not secure. Well, when I call you, you could type in a PIN number that only you know, and then that, that authenticates you. So there, the options are there. But once we authenticate you using, you know, maybe using a password plus MFA, 
Well, we need to look at the other things like the device. Is it trusted? Is it managed? Is it compliant? Does it have any threats on it? What kind of data are you trying to access? Is it classified? Is it encrypted? Where's the application stored? Where's the data stored? What's the risk of your user account? What's the risk of your session? Taking all these signals together and then making a verdict here of, are we gonna allow you through the front door or do we have to escort you through the front door or are we just going to turn you away at the front door and block you? And so this really has to start also with applying strong governance, least privileged access, but have this life cycle of provisioning and deprovisioning, onboarding and offboarding, a life cycle of governing access and providing oversight, who has access to what, and let's recertify, and let's make sure that um, you know, we look at who's accessing this data and these apps. And then looking at our admins, admins cannot have global admin God mode access to the apps anymore. We have to give them just enough access, limited permissions, and then just in time access so that it's time bound. Because admins are the weakest link here because they have the most access to everything in our user population. And so things to think about. Now, when I talk about devices, this is extremely important. And this is one of my favorite parts of Zero Trust because after we look at the identity perspective, let's look at the device perspective. Has the device been manipulated at the firmware level? What's the health of that device? Is there any threats on it? Is it compliant with my IT policy? Are there malicious applications installed? And we're getting this signal from Azure Active Directory, from the MDM, like Microsoft Endpoint Manager. We're getting it from Microsoft Defender Advanced Threat Protection, but we're also getting it from our mobile threat defense partners as well that may be on that device. And so to, to make this real here, when I go to access you know, a resource, again, we're gonna make sure that you are managed. We're gonna make sure that your device is compliant with IT policies. We're gonna make sure that it's free of threats. And then we're gonna make a determination whether or not we lie through the front door. And not just for Office 365, but also for other SaaS apps out there like G Suite or Salesforce. Now, the cool part about this is being able to block that and then be able to wipe that device or wipe just the data, that corporate data off that device. And that's where we talk about the differences between mobile device management and mobile application management. This is part of Zero Trust as well. I don't always have to manage the entire device and manage you know, the OS. Maybe I just might wanna manage that corporate app like the Outlook app, not touch the rest of the device, but making sure when you launch that app, you have to type in a passcode, making sure that data in the app is encrypted, making sure that we block screenshots in the app, making sure that uh, we apply all the appropriate controls. If the device is rooted or jailbroken, denying access to the app, so on and so forth, removing only uh, corporate data from that app. And then for MDM, you know, same thing there as well. So that has to be factored into this zero trust approach. Now applications and APIs, they're providing the interface here for how I consume my data. And we have to take into account what kind of apps users are using, cloud apps. Again, they're storing data everywhere. You may or may not be aware of this. And so it's about going out and discovering those, those apps that users are using, not just behind the firewall, but outside the firewall, evaluating those apps and then blocking access, even blocking access dynamically, or approving access and applying policy to those cloud apps. So here, let's make it real for a moment. Let's pretend that my data, I have a Word document stored in G Suite, as an example. When I go to sign into G Suite, let's assess the risk of that user account. You know, are the credentials up for sale on the dark web and possible travel, so on and so forth. And then let's also authenticate using multi-factor authentication. Let's make sure that device is compliant and managed and free of threats. But also what kind of data are you trying to access? Is it classified and encrypted and labeled? If that's the case, then maybe I wanna block your ability to print. Maybe I wanna block your ability to download. Maybe I wanna block your ability to copy data out of the document, paste it you know, locally somewhere. Or maybe I'm gonna allow you to download it, but apply DLP, apply an Azure Information Protection label and encryption policy to that document. So being able to actually control the session of that document, that's zero trust. Now, the other part of this here is being able to protect the data no matter where it's stored. If it's stored in a cloud app, that's okay. Let's go through all of that data. Let's comb through it, look for the sensitivity of that data and label it and encrypt it and start governing access to it and controlling that data. And here you can see just some of the apps here that Microsoft supports of being able to do that. Now, one of my favorite parts about this is also infrastructure. 
And this is being able to um, apply the zero trust approach to things like uh, on-premises servers and even virtual machines and IaaS and even PaaS services and microservices and containers. And so a clear and simple segment sh segmentation strategy here, this helps contain the risk, but it also helps, allows you to enable more productivity uh, to the end user. And so by exploring some of this, it boils down to really three simple approaches. One, ensuring alignment of your technical teams to a single segmentation strategy, right? That's important. But also investing in, in containment and establishing that modern perimeter based on zero trust principles that I've been talking about here. And then bolstering network controls for those legacy applications, right? And so when I think about this, I have to be able to enable operations, contain risk, and then monitor this for security violations and threats. Now, what I love about being able to do this here is with Azure Security Center. Now, I've got other videos out there where I talk about Azure Security Center, but this applies to resources in Azure, but also in your on-premises data center and AWS and even Google Cloud Platform. And what I love about this is it allows you to identify configuration drift. It allows you to identify threats. It allows you to identify policy violations on those resources and then mitigate that. It's pretty amazing. And so that is definitely part of Zero Trust, but it also allows me to apply just-in-time access and just enough access controls for those IT admins that have to manage those resources. Because after all, they do have keys to the kingdom. And then it's, it's pulling in you know, these, these signals and it's evaluating things and it's actually using real-time threat monitoring here to detect attacks and anomalies and, and, and anomalies with authentication or anomalies with uh, you know, how a specific resource is being used. And I can even have playbooks that run that automatically mitigate and respond to that anomaly or that threat. Now, networking is obviously important. And so as I have my application or even a virtual machine up in Azure, as an example here, I have to be able to segment that network to minimize the blast radius of an attack. And this is around being able to implement software-defined perimeters and being able to apply granular controls in those perimeters. Basically, the name of the game here is increasing the cost and making it more expensive to attackers and then dramatically reducing their likelihood of being able to move laterally throughout the environment. So if they compromise one resource, they have all these other layers they have to go through to be able to get to that next resource. And so this is about being able to do things like subscription or resource level access control to provide identity isolation for your IT admins. Applying virtual network security as a boundary and isolating a virtual network from other virtual, virtual networks. Applying network security groups to enforce and control network traffic. And being able to do things like Azure Firewall and applying a stateful firewall that can enforce connectivity policies. So this is really important. And when it comes to threat protection at the network layer, and you think about Azure networking, these are tools to help you safeguard those resources from inbound and outbound threats. And again, as well as preventing lateral movement. And so inbound and outbound and lateral movement, you might want to think about maybe using Azure Firewall for that. Or for inbound threats, maybe it's denial of service attacks. So using the Azure DDoS uh, service for that, even the Azure Web Application Firewall service, so on and so forth. And so there are you know, solutions here, but also solutions from our industry partners out there that may be specific to a industry vertical, like healthcare, as an example. And so thinking about your network protection layer is just as critical as identity or even devices. Now, the other thing here is encryption built into Azure. And so being able to protect data at, at rest while it's on disk and encrypting it, protecting data while it's in transit, and then also while it's in use. And we can go on and on about this, and I'll, maybe I'll do another video about encryption built into Azure, but that's important for your zero trust approach. Now, let's talk about the data. Because by far, this is the most important part of all of Zero Trust is, after all, this is really what we're trying to protect here. So as I mentioned before, you know, it shouldn't matter where that data is stored. But knowing your data is a critical step in applying Zero Trust. And so this means you have to discover and classify that sensitive data, whether it's intellectual property or PII or PHI or whatever it may be, across the organization, across all of the sources and, and places it may live, so you have a deep understanding of where that data is stored. And once you understand it, applying classification to then encrypt it and identify it and catalog it. 
So then you can start applying policy to it. And when you think about using something like Microsoft Information Protection, this is being able to provide things like sensitive information types and pre-built labels, but also being able to use regex policies, be able to use document fingerprints, being able to use machine learning to identify sensitive data, and then go out there and actually encrypt it no matter where it's stored and control access to it as well. And so what I love about this is it's encrypting the data, sure. It's cataloging the data, absolutely. But it's also controlling access. When you try to open that Word document, as I mentioned before, is it on a managed device? Is the device free of threats? Is it compliant with your IT policy? What about the status of your identity? Is it up for sale on the dark web? Is there impossible travel taking place? Um, is is multi-factor authentication uh, being, uh, being met? Right? All those different things. But also being able to block the download of that data if you're maybe on, an, on a personal device. Blocking the sharing of that data to other individuals. Applying visual markings. Now, all of this is absolutely important to zero trust, but it doesn't mean anything unless you're able to monitor and remediate it. Now, that's where the key to automation comes in. And like a, like a river flowing, right, and mapping data flow, this allows you to identify, uh, you know, the wellspring here that it creates and the landscapes that shape it and the branches that fork from it. And so in short here, you want to be able to learn from where the information gets stored, what applications process it, what, app, what users access it, and where that data is going and whom it's shared with. And being able to have that visibility helps you fine tune those policies, helps you take a, make adjustments, but it also helps you remediate that data that's at risk. And this is where the automation comes in. So let's talk about that visibility and analytics co core component here of Zero Trust. Now, I, I'm not going to go too deep into it in this video. I have other videos out there where I talk about these things. And if you're interested in hearing more, hit me up on LinkedIn and tell me what you want to learn about, and I'll, I'll publish more videos. But this is where you know monitoring zero trust and applying automation is absolutely critical. So we're going to bring in Microsoft Threat Protection. Microsoft Threat Protection is comprised of Azure Active Directory, Microsoft Cloud App Security, Office 365 ATP, Defender ATP, Azure ATP. And it's taking signals from my data, my endpoints, my users, and my apps. And it's combining that signals and it's forwarding up to our, our Sentinel, or sorry, our SIM known as Azure Sentinel. And then it's also taken all those similar signals, but from my network infrastructure, from my, from my SQL servers, from my virtual machines, from my uh, virtual networks and IoT devices, taking those similar signals and forwarding that up to our SIM known as Sentinel. Being able to forward signals from other clouds, AWS or GCP into Sentinel. Being able to forward uh, you know, other threat intelligence feeds and maybe forward data from other third-party sources into Sentinel. And doing the analysis there in the centralized place to give me those insights, give me those analytics into what's happening across the environment, but then also allow me to automate response. And that is the key part here. Okay, so we did this in just under 20 minutes. I want you to go out there and access this website. There's a lot of resources available on Zero Trust. There's white papers and all sorts of things. Uh, I'll be publishing additional videos very soon here on in-depth demos and getting hands-on and showing how to set up the policies and going through all these different technologies. Uh, let me know in the comments, though, what do you think about this? If is there something that I missed? Is there something that you want to see? Uh, what do you think about Zero Trust? How do you approach it? Let's talk about it. Okay, folks, uh, hopefully you found value in this. If you did, give me a thumbs up. If you didn't, that's okay too. And uh, we'll be seeing you in the next video. Take care, everybody.